Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about practice problems week 7. So in this week we're going to work with favorites and another problem and here we're going to become more familiar with SQL. So we're going to work in this particular problem for now with select and update. So what is going on in this problem? Let's understand. Basically we're going to receive a database, as we can see here, the shows table, where we contain the name of multiple TV shows that we have uh, available nowadays. So for example, How I Met Your Mother, The Sopranos, Friday Night Lights, Family Guy and so on. Our goal is to get these titles here and we're gonna make this we're gonna update the title by making the same notation as we can see here for let's see this example when we do how I met your mother in our table it's this way only we ha we only have here capital H and our goal is to change the notation should be capitalized all the first letters so how are we gonna do this we're gonna work with the update table and then so we're gonna work with the select to see if we're doing the correct changes and this is the list of all titles we're gonna change so let's start from the first scenario here with adventure time and then we can see if it's working or not and the following up uh, of the the program will be the same all right so here if we find for let's work with how i met your mother here we have how i met your mother with capital h so how can i do this let's see how the update statement works basically when we work with update we have to say update the name of the table and then we're gonna set the column that we want to change in our case title with the value we want to change okay and then we have to use the where condition here to say what is the title we want to change so what is the column in which row we want to change and this is pretty much what we're gonna do so we're gonna change the title where the title is how I met your mother okay so how can we do this so I'm gonna do for the first scenario I'm gonna say update then we need to say the name of the table in our particular case the name of the table is shows then we're gonna say set the name of the column we want to change in our case is title and now we're gonna say what is the new version of our title and in our case we want to let everything capitalize so how I met your mother then we need to say what is the row we're gonna change this title here and we're gonna use the where condition so where title is equals to how I met your mother one thing that is interesting is that every time we're using equals in SQL we're expecting to get exactly this string we're working here so I'm looking only for the moments that people wrote how I met your mother only with capital A but there might be another occurrences where people wrote how I met your mother in a different way so instead of using equals we can use the word like and the like will find a string similar to this ignoring the cases if it's lower or uppercase all right, so let's see if it's working. To initialize our terminal here, we need to enter in the, the directory here in our folder and we have to say the command to open up the SQLite terminal. So here's SQL, all lowercase, SQLite 3. And then we need to say the name of our database. In our case, it's favorites.db. Oops. And if I click enter, it will start our SQLite terminal. So let's see how is the structure here. If I do, if I run our updated version, if I run here update, we won't be seeing anything. Oh, I said here show, but it shows. It's already in telling us that we have a bug so I'm gonna put here shows and it's not showing anything here for us but let's see here once I refresh this page let's see if we change here and as we can see now it's all capitalized okay but instead of checking here we can use the select keyword and the select it's another uh, it's another command we can use in SQL to get the data from our table so I can say select and here I want to select all so I'm gonna use start from the name of the table shows and this is pretty much what I want to see so once I run this we're gonna see all the shows we have in here okay so we have here from one to the end of our database but this is not in order right this is not in alphabetical order so we're able to order this by the title so to do this we can do order by and the name of the table we want to order so I want to order by title let's see now what happens so if I run the command again we will see that we have now everything in order let me find it here so we're starting with the letter a until the end of our table okay and in here we have a couple of things to work so your goal right now what well, I'm gonna be doing this and soon I will be back but now we're gonna do exactly what we did in here in our line one but instead of using how I met your mother you're gonna do the same for all these lists all these items we have here in our list so I'll be doing this and so I'll be right back all right so I ran here all these lines to do the changes for the first list we saw in here okay and then I use the select in or ordered by alph uh, alphabetical order here so we can see that now we have all correctly okay so Brooklyn Line 9 Game of Thrones we don't have any issue but this is the first part now you can work with the challenge that they kind of give us in here so now we have to work with some particular cases and let's see what is going on so the first one is Brooklyn 99 we already fixed the main cases for Brooklyn 99 right if 
if we take a look in here, Brooklyn 99. But it's important for us to see that people can type in B99 instead of saying Brooklyn 99, or they can just say Brooklyn without a dash and the number 99. So how can we fix this? Here we have to work with some other cases to help us to improve it. So my other case would be saying that B99, here I'm gonna say Brooklyn 99. I think this is how they are expecting us to write it down with a dash. Great. And I want to do this where the title is B99, for example. And I want to update as well in the scenarios where we have Brooklyn uh, and something. Okay, so here Brooklyn. And it can be something after, that can be a number. So how can we represent that something can exist after our string? We can use the percentage. The percentage is a placeholder saying that we can have or not something else after the word we're looking for. So if I say this, let's see first this B99 going on. So if I update here and if I select the, the the table again. Now where we had B99, we don't have it anymore. Okay, we don't have B99 anymore. Now we need to work with this Brooklyn 99 with numbers, all right, or as we have in here. So how can we do this? We're going to use this percentage as I mentioned, and it will change for us all the Brooklyn 99's appearance. So let's see, we don't have here in the bottom anymore, and if we scroll up, we have more Brooklyn 99 the correct way. Okay, so this is the first thing we have to worry about. Now let's work with Game of Thrones. So if we take a look at Game of Thrones here, we have all correct, but we have got because got is another way of saying Game of Thrones. So to do this, we're gonna say that here, I wanna write it down Game of Thrones, and where we have here, got, okay? And once I run this line, we're don't gonna have got anymore, all right? Let's see. So if I scroll up at Game of Thrones, we don't have got anymore, great? Now let's work with Grey's Anatomy. So here in Grey's Anatomy, we're having the same issue. One is the correct way, the other one isn't. So we can do something similar to what we did for Brooklyn. So here I'm gonna say Grey's Anatomy, where we have Grey's and something else. So to say gray, actually I'm just gonna say gray. Gray and a percentage. So if we're not using a single quotation mark, it will be fine to understand that this is what we want. And let's see now if we have all the gray's anatomy. Yes, we have. Now they're all capitalized the way that it should. And we're gonna continue working with that. So it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Let's see if we find here the problem. So it's always sunny, G-H-I. Here, it doesn't contain this the, the quotation mark. So we're gonna find for Philadelphia. Okay, so here I'm gonna say it's all always, oops, always sunny in Philadelphia. And here I'm just gonna search for the word of here, Philadelphia. And we can have something in the beginning. So I'm gonna change the position of the percentage. So I'm saying it can contain something in front and in the end we're gonna stop with Philadelphia. So let's see if it's working one more time. And this is all good because we're updating our table the way that it's supposed to. So now if we go to I, let's see. Now we have the correct spelling that we want. The next case will be parks and recreation. And this is kind of interesting because for parks and recreation we have parks and rec. So we're gonna be able, we have to allow to find this parks and rec as well. So here I'm gonna say parks and recreation and the title it will be parks and rec. And here we're updating all to be a standard. And now if we search for parks and recreation, it's all the way it should, parks and recreation. Great. The next one will be the office. And here's kind of the same idea of um, Game of Thrones. People can just say office instead of the office, as we can see. So we have to allow receiving in front or after. Okay, so let's do our final update. And I want to say the office, the office, every time we find office. All right. And this is pretty much what we have to do. You can still play around a little bit more. So for example, if we take a look in here, now we have more the office, great. But if we take a look in here, we have criminal minds, we have Sherlock Holmes. Instead of only Sherlock, so you can continue updating your table to be the way that you want. So this is pretty much for this problem. Now let's work with the next one. Are you interested in learning how to code? If so, it's important to know where you're starting from. Taking a prognostic quiz can help you get a sense of your current skill level and give you a starting point for your journey. Check out our free quiz at the description at the end of the video and get your personalized study plan. So now in How of Prophecy, we're going to receive a database in here. As, as we can see, we have the student name of all people that are from Hogwarts, their house and the head of the house. And our goal here, we have this database, all right? Our goal is to split this table into three, all right? So what they want us to do, we're going to create one table only for students. So one table that we're going to contain only the name of the students, all right? So we're going to have only this column. We're going to create another table that will be the house. Yes. <laughs> 
of uh, that exists. So it's going to be only this column without duplicates. And as we know from Harry Potter, we only have four houses. And we're going to create a third table that codifies the relationship between students and houses. All right. So here we're going to create this relationship where which student lives in which house. All right. Actually, I said something by mistake. We're going to say the house and the head for the second table. Okay. So basically, we have to work with this database and create three more tables to store the same data in a more organized way. But we're not going to do this manually. We're going to use this. Uh, we're going to do this by coding. All right. And we're going to use SQL in Python. And that's amazing because it will save us a lot of time. This is pretty much what we need to know for now. All right. This is the main idea of the problem and this is the database as we saw in our database we only contain the table students and the students table contain these three columns now our goal is to do the following here in our csv file we have the same data as we have in the database okay and our goal is to read this csv file and here if you see the structure is the same student house and head and we're going to read the csv file and create the three tables we're going to store the data of this csv file in three different parts so in the future it's easier for us to create a new table and store this data in our sql so we have two steps in here all right actually three we have to read the data in our csv file we have to uh, organize the data into three pieces the students house and the relationship and the third step is to send this data that we just organized it to our database all right so let's start from the beginning let's start by creating a new file here in our prophecy folder that will be called whatever you want but it's a it will be a python file i'm gonna call it students.py all right and in this file i want to start by reading our csv file so to do this we're going to import csv as we saw in the past uh we're able in the previous week we were we we're able to read files using the csv library all right and we're going to use the dict reader to read this file because the dict reader will help us reading each row in here in a more organized way again if you don't remember let's see this animation here to refresh your memory a little bit for example, if we have a file called harry.csv that contains in the first line, name, comma, house, second line, Harry Potter, comma, Gryffindor, third line, Ron Weasley, comma, Gryffindor, and fourth line, Hermione, Ranger, Gryffindor. We can read this CSV file using Python. First, we need to open the txt file by storing the file in a variable using the with open function. So in this case, we need to import the CSV library and we use with open the first input. We put the name of the CSV file we want to open and the second input the way that we want to open. In this case, R, because this means that we are reading. And then we say as CSV file. The CSV file can be any name as you want. Then we can read every line using two methods. The first one is using reader. So if we do, so if we create a variable called reader equals true, and then we use this function csv.reader, and inside the parentheses we put the name of the file we're opening, the reader function will create one list for each row of our CSV file. We can take a look at this by doing everything we had before, but now using a for loop. So for row in reader, if we print row, we're gonna see in every line of our output one list that contains the element of the row. The other method that we can use is a dict reader. So instead of doing reader equals to csv.reader, now we do reader equals to csv.dictreader and we pass the csv file inside the parentheses. The dictreader function will create one dictionary for each row of our csv file. We can take a look at this by doing the same code that we had before and doing a for loop. So for row in reader, print row, and the output are all the rows in the format of a dictionary. All right, so as we can see, we're able to read files, to read CSV files and store the data in our Python file, okay? So to do this, let's start doing with open and we're gonna say what is the name of the CSV file we wanna open up and it's student.csv. And then we're gonna say what is the mode we wanna open this file and here it's R because we wanna read it. And then I'm gonna say as CSV file. Then to say that we're gonna use the dict reader, I'm gonna create a variable called read and I'm gonna do csv.dictreader and I will say what is the file that I want to open up as a dictionary. So here it will be csv file. To check what is going on, I'm gonna do a loop in all the rows we have in our csv file so we are able to see the structure that the, CS the dict reader is giving to us. So if I say for row in reader, for example, and if I print reader, let's see what is going on. So if I run here python students.py, we will see, oops, oh, 
All right, I know I made a mistake. I don't want to print reader, I want to print row. That's the problem. So if I run now, we will see that each row in here in our for loop will be one row in our CSV file. So let's just compare in here. If I go to the last row, we have Vincent, Slytherin, and Severo Snape. And here it's exactly this. Here we have Vincent, Slytherin, and Severo Snape as our last row. So basically in each iteration, when we're looping, when we're opening a file, a CSV file as dict reader, the row will be stored in a dictionary. So it's easier for us to get each particular column. So we know that student name is Vincent, we know that house is Slytherin, and head is Severus name. And this will be pretty good for us to, to manipulate our file. So before we move on, I'm going to create three lists. One for each table we're going to complete in the future to start the data from each table. So the first one I'm going to call is students, and it will be an empty list. The other one will be called houses, and it's going to be another empty list. And then I'm going to create a relationships to start a relationship between students and house, as we mentioned. All right. Now I want to create some variables to help us out. So knowing that we're going to receive here in each iteration a dictionary, I want to start in a variable, the student name, the house, and the head. All right. So here I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say name is equal to our row on position is student name. I want to say that house will be equal to row on position house. And by now you should be comfortable with that, right? Because in the previous week we worked a lot with dictionaries and CSV files, but it's always good to remember. And the head will be equal to row. And then here I'm going to say head. All right. So this way I'm just creating a variable to help us out. Now, just to make our code a little bit more clear, I'm going to create some functions to store the data from our students, house and relationship. Okay. So here I'm going to define a function. Actually, not in here. I'm going to define a function in the top that I'm going to call. Let me just see what is the name I'm giving create house. And in this create house function, I'm expecting to receive the house that we are receiving from in the row in here. So for example, Slytherin and our houses list. And what is the goal of our create house function? I want to fill in in this list the houses that we want, but I don't want to fill in all the houses we have in our database. I just I want to avoid duplicates because we know from Harry Potter, we only have four houses, but in our CSV file, we have 40 lines. So in our case, I just want to add in our dictionary if we don't have the house yet in our list. So how can we do this? I'm going to do a loop in all of the houses we have. All right. So here I'm going to say I'm going to create a count variable. All right. And I want to check. I'm going to do a loop in all of the houses we have here in our list. And I want to see if I already have the name in here. OK, so I'm going to say for H in houses, for example, for house in houses, I want to check if H is equal to our house that we're receiving from our dictionary, from our CSV file. If it is, I'm going to increment the value of house. All right. And by the end of the for loop, if our count variable is still zero, this means that we'd never find the name of the house in our list. So this means that it's a brand new house to add in our list. So I'm going to add this. So if here count is equal to zero, I'm going to append the house from the CSV file in our houses list. So here I'm going to say houses dot append and I'm going to append house. This might be a little bit confusing. So let's check what's going on using a debugger. So I'm going to call the function here create house and I want to send house and houses and then I'm going to print after our for loop I want to print out houses so we're able to see what's going on okay so let me put a breakpoint in our line 23 so if I clear here and I click run and debug let's see what's exactly going on so now with the debugger let's see what we have in here so let's suppose we're reading here we're reading the first row where we have Adelaide Slytherin and Severus when we enter in the create house we're sending house and houses all right so houses is Slytherin and houses it's our list. And in here, we're going to do the following. We're counting equals to zero. We're then when we go to the next line, we're going to look through all the houses we have in our houses list. But right now, houses is empty. So we're going to skip this if statement. And since our count is zero, we're going to append the Slytherin in our houses list. OK, and we're going to continue doing this. So let's suppose now we are in our next example. Here we have a Slytherin again. So if I enter now, we have Ravenclaw. So here we're initializing our variable count equals to zero. We're going to do a loop. So H will be first Slytherin, that is the only item we have. Since Slytherin is different than Ravenclaw, we're going to skip our if statement and we finish our loop. Since count is equal to zero, we're going to append Ravenclaw in our houses list. And if, let's suppose here, we have house equals to Slytherin again, that is the one we're seeing. So here we're going to check count is equal to zero. Now we're going to loop through our houses. So the first loop is Slytherin. Since Slytherin is equal to Slytherin, we're going to add one in our count. We're going to check the next one that is Ravenclaw, so it won't work as if 
statement. But in here, our count isn't zero anymore. It's one. So we're not going to append slithering because we already have it. All right. So this is pretty much what's going on in this function. But we don't want to add in this list only the name of the house. We want to add a dictionary with the name of the house and the head. So here I'm going to send the head when I'm calling the function. And here I have to explicitly say that we're receiving the head. And I'm going to append a dictionary. So here I'm going to say house. And I want this to be equal to our variable house. And for head, I want to store our variable head. So let's see what's going on. So now if I run our code, we will see that... Oops, I'm printing houses. Why is that? Oh, okay. Because now we have to access exactly the house key. All right. So we're able to compare the correct thing. So now we have here houses, houses Lithering and the head is Severus Snape. The other house is Ravenclaw and the head is uh, Flitwick. The other house is Hupopuff and the head is another one. And Gryffindor, it's Minerva. So basically, now we're doing the correct loop and we're adding the head as well. Okay. So this is what we need for the create house. Now we're going to create the student. And for creating the student is a pretty much easy. Because in here we just need to open the student name in our students list. So here I'm going to say create student. And I want to say receive the name and the students list. So in here I'm going to just do the students dot append. And I want to append here name. Oh, I want to append the dictionary where we're going to have name. And then I want to put the actual name of the student. Here we can say student name just to be more clear. All right. And here I'm going to call the function create a student. And I want to send a name and students. So if I print now a students, we're going to see all the students list in our code. So here we're going to have all the students name with their particular name in here. Okay, It's a little bit more organized. And the last one is adding the relationship. So we're going to add the student and the house that the student lived. So here I'm going to create relationship and I want to send the name, the house and the list relationships. Okay. And here we're going to do exactly what we did for create student. We're going to append in relationships our new dictionary where we're going to have the student name and I want to put here name and we're going to have the house and here I want to say house. All right. So if I call here the function create relationship and I send name, house and the, the list relationships, we're going to see here our relationships list. Let's see relationships. It will be a little bit more organized as well where we're going to be able to see. Let's suppose we're seeing here the first row. We have the student name and the house together. So here we have this relationship that we mentioned. Okay, so this is the first part of the, actually the second part of our program. The first one was opening the CSV file. The second one was doing that. And now we're going to handle with our database. All right. So first we need to create the three tables in our CSV file. So if we open up here rooster.db, we're going to see that we only have one table. We can manually add the table in here, but since we're working with SQL, we can use this notation here, this command create table, where we're going to say the name of the table and the columns with its data type. All right, so let's create the table exactly according to what we want. So I'm going to open up here schema.sql and let me clear here the terminal just to be less noisy. And we know that, let's start from students. We know that our students will contain only the name of the person. Okay, so here I'm going to create table and I want to give the name new students. So the first column I want to give will be an ID. Every time we're working with tables, remember to create a primary key in here so we can keep track of the correct number. So here ID and ID will be an integer. The next one for new students will be the student name. And here it will be a string, but we don't have string, so we're going to say text. And in here in the bottom, we have to say what will be the common for the primary key. So here I'm going to say primary key, and I'm going to say that will be our ID. Okay, so here we built the first table. So let's see if it's working. Now if I open up here our terminal for SQL, so SQLite 3, rooster.db, and now if I paste this create table, we're going to see here in our database that once I refresh it, we're going to have a new table called new students. All right. And we're going to do the same now for house and relationship. So here for houses, I'm going to have an ID. I'm going to have the house. Okay. That will be a text as well. And I'm going to have the head. That will be another text. Okay. So if we create in here, let's see. And if I refresh, we're going to have our houses table exactly with the structure that we built. So we have the ID, the house and the head. All right. And to finish, we need to create the relationship table. So here I'm going to call relationship. Oops. Relationship. And here we're going to have the student name and the house, right? And this is pretty much what we have to do in here in this schema.sql. So if I run this command, we're going to have our brand new table called relationship with this structure that we want. Okay, so we're done with the create table. Now we need to insert the data we have here in our Python. So this data we have here in students house and relationship into our database. And to do so, we're going to use the insert into statement. But before we use the insert into statement, we need to make our Python file configure to, we need to do some setup to accept working with SQL inside of our code. Okay, so to do this, the first
first thing we're going to do will be first here in the top of our code we're going to import sql from cs50 so here import sql from sorry it's the other way around from cs50 import sql so now we're able to work with sql then we're going to create a variable here that will store what is the database we're working so i'm going to call i'm going to create a variable called db and the structure here is saying sql quotation marks sql light colon three by effort slash and the name of our database that is rooster.db okay so now we're saying that in the variable db we're going to store the database that we're going to manipulate okay and now we're open to add things in our database so now it's where the insert into comes in so to add things in our database i want to loop through every item we have in our list and i want to insert into this a database this table the data we have in our python okay so this will be the command we're gonna say insert into the name of the table all the columns we want to insert something and the values we want to insert in this column okay so let's do this together let's suppose i want to insert first in our new students database so first i'm gonna do a loop through all the students we have so for student in students list i want to insert into the data so here first i have to call our variable db to say that we want to insert in our database here the rooster.db then i'm gonna say execute so this is how Python understands the command we're going to write in SQL here inside the quotation mark. So I'm going to do insert into the name of the table here. It's new students. All right. As we created here, it's new students. Then we need to say what are the columns we want to insert. So we know that new students only contain two columns, the ID and the name of the student. The ID is autocomplete. So we just need to complete here the student name. So here I'm going to say, oops, student name and the values will be a question mark because this question mark will be a placeholder for whatever value we have in Python and we're going to insert here in the placeholder okay and what will be the value we're going to say comma and the name of the parameter that is storing this for us so since we're doing a loop through our students list we want to access exactly the student name from our list right so we're going to do the following we're going to say that i want to get the student on position is student's name here we're just manipulating on dictionaries as we are already familiar let me put his in the bottom again so we're able to see the full structure so i want to insert into our table new students in our column student's name the value of our person and so when we execute this, we're going to see the name of each student we have. And we're going to do the same for all the other relations. So here for relations, for rel in relationships, for example, I want to do db.execute, quotation mark, insert into relationship. That is the name of our table. And let's see what was the name of the columns we gave for relationship. So here in relationship, we have the structure that it's ID, student name, and house. So we're going to append, we're going to add data in student name and house. So I want to say student name, comma, house, the values. And here, since we have two tables, we need to add two, two question marks and we're going to add the placeholders in the same position. So the first question mark is related to student name. The second question mark is related to houses. So when we're adding the data in here, we have to call, we have to follow the same structure. So first one is for student name. So rel here is student name and then comma again, rel house. Okay. And to finish, we need to work with our house table. So for house in houses, I want to db.execute again. I want to insert into our house table and what were the columns let's double check in here so in our house table we have its houses it's important that we don't have any typo here so houses we want to add in here what is the structure we have house and head so we're going to add in them so here house and head the values here to question mark as we saw and then we add the parameters so here house on position house and house on position head all right everything seems pretty good so let's run our code and see if we're able to complete all right so when I run our code we're gonna see that here we're gonna contain 40 new students 40 relations and four houses so let's see if we're able to see this so if I run in here python students.py all right we're having a problem key error students name so here it's only student okay so let's run again I believe now we fix this issue and here we have the syntax at the line more tall. let me see what is the problem and I will be fixing here all right so I just found out the problem here is the parentheses that we were missing and I ran the code again and here we have zero records but once I refresh we will see that we have four, have four records for houses. So let's see how it is right now. We have Slytherin and the head, Ravenclaw, the head, Hufflepuff, the head, and Gryffindor, the head, as we were expecting. Okay. For new students, let's see how is this table. We only have the ID and the student name, as we were expecting as well. And finally, just to see if we're 100% 
perfect. We have here the student name and the house. So we have Adeline and Slytherin and for all of those cases as we were expecting. Okay, we have no check 50 for this, so we're done with the problem, okay? If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, send here on the comments or you can join our Discord community and have our help when you're learning how to code, okay? I hope to see you soon, bye-bye.